number 162. <laughs> Tell 
Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I would like to thank you for bringing us here this evening, Lord, into your house. I would like to ask that you may open our ears, Lord, open our hearts, open our minds to the word. And may please bless the word, Lord, bless the speaker. In your name I pray, amen. We would like to welcome you to day three, right? Day three of our evangelistic uh, series. Yes, um, I'm going to try to make it short so that we don't eat on the time of, for the presenter. Yes. How many visitors do we have today? Those who are coming for the first time today. Can we Amen. 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 Good. Mm. Let us continue to invite visitors. These meetings are very important. We welcome all of you. We even welcome those who are watching by Zoom. May God bless you. We know we've eaten into the time for the presenter. We will not take any more time. We will say this is your time. Maybe just to mention a few announcements. Let us continue to cooperate with our security people who are looking after our vehicles. When Are, they tell us where to park, let us do that. Um, we have been providing some beverages, eh, that is the term, again, beverages, warm beverages because it's cold. But that should not disturb our service, isn't it? Yes. May the Lord be with us as we listen to today's message. Thank you. Good evening. Dumelang. Dumelang Puteho. Good evening, church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I humbly come before you, Lord. I ask that you may empty me of myself, Lord, and that you may fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. I ask the same for each and every one present here, Lord, and for those watching. Lord, I pray and I ask that you may open our ears, our heart, Lord, and that you may give me wisdom to be able to speak your words, Lord. Lord, I pray and I ask that you be with me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. How are you today? I have to admit, I have fallen in love with this church. I feel like this is my family. I feel at home. And I want to thank you for the love that you have demonstrated me. My name, for those who, this is the first time you see me. My name is Glennis Brooks. And I am a student studying education. In the University of Southern Adventist University. 
in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America. Kwa lihilo leneleo la Tennessee kwa Amerika. But I am originally from a small country called Honduras. Me tota kwa ketola kante nke la hatsile le nyana nyana le ditswa ene Honduras. And I am blessed to be with you tonight. Me ke so go hetse gore be ke na le lona mo maitsebo nga go mpieno. Tonight's message is titled Your Day in Court. Tsatsile no mola etsa wa rona stogo sa teng ke le tsatsila ga go mo gota tsekelong. But before I start with tonight's message, I want to give you a preview for tomorrow's message. Me pele ga ri simola mola etsa wa go mpieno nte re le ha mathase di ya mola etsa wa ka moso. Tomorrow's message is going to be titled Whatever Happened with the Difference Between Right and Wrong. Mola etsa wa ka moso se thoga sa teng ke gore tota go diragetseng ka pharloganyo. Around the world, we see terrible acts of violence. War, death, and abuse. It seems as if humanity has lost its moral compass. It is not easy for us to determine with certainty what is good and what is bad. What is the truth and what is a lie? So don't miss tomorrow's program. Titled Whatever Happened to the Difference Between Right and Wrong. Come tomorrow as we find the Bible answers. Remember that the Bible holds the truth and power. So, Let's continue with tonight's message, your day in court. It has been said that it's better for 99 guilty men to go free. Then one innocent be unjustly imprisoned. What do you think? Which one do you think is worse? For the guilty one to go free? Or for the one who is falsely accused? Or for the one who is falsely accused? And it is innocent and it's innocent to be punished unjustly. I don't think anyone wants a guilty man to be free. I don't think anyone wants a criminal to put others in danger. But do any of us really want an innocent person to be punished? Let me ask you another question. Have you ever been accused of something that you hadn't done? Or has some, somebody told you that you did something? No. Or for something that you never said? And if you grew up with siblings, then you know they accuse you all the time. Maybe you were blamed for something that someone else did. And you ended up being punished instead of them. Growing up, I would always be the one that would be blamed for something I never did. I always thought because I was louder than the rest of my family members that I was always the guilty one. But now I realize that that's not true. Brothers and sisters, I have bad news for you tonight. Every single one of you are going to be judged. Every single one of you is being accused. And the worst thing is, 
that you are actually guilty. And you might say, I'm not guilty. Oh, but we are. Your day in court is coming. And you may ask, well, how do you know my day in court is coming? Because the Bible told me so. And do you know what's the worst news of it all? I'm also guilty. And I'm going to be in court too. And according to Revelation 14.6 And if you have your Bible, please let's go to it. Revelation 14.6 Revelation 14.6 when you're there, please say amen. 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 The Bible says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. Having the everlasting gospel. To preach to those who have dwelt on the earth. To every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And verse 7 says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment has come. The Bible says that this message is for every ethnic group and tribe for all language and for people of all worlds. The message is the hour of God's judgment has come. Brothers and sisters, this is not an earthly court. This is not the court of the century. This is the final judgment. Where we will all be judged. Daniel saw the courtroom scene. And we can read it in Daniel 7, 9 to 13. And he said, and I looked. Thrones were placed. And the ancients of days took his seats. His clothing was white as snow. And his head, hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flame. A thousand thousand served him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment. And the books were open. Notice that immediately after this judgment, the coming of Christ takes place. And he continues to say, And to him was given dominion and glory, and a kingdom that all people, nation, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. In his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. The book of, in the book of Acts 17.31, 17, 
It says that God has appointed a day on which he will judge the world. Ga tu modimo be leletsa tsi mo ka lone ata a tholane ha tsi. So you may be asking, why is this judgment necessary? Well, if you remember, the Bible says that God created Lucifer. He was a being of dazzling brightness and beauty. That rebelled against God. And he led the universe to disobedience. And we can read about his fall in Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 14. Which says, How you are fallen from heaven. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weaken the nation. You said in your heart. I will ascend to heaven. Above the stars of God. And I will set my throne on high. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will make myself like the most high. Brothers and sisters, Lucifer claimed that God was unfair. He led one third of the angels into rebellion. He came to this planet earth. And he led Adam and Eve to the same sin. They rejected God's love and his authority. And Lucifer accused God before the uniform. Lucifer And he said, God is not fair. God's way is not the best. God's laws cannot be kept. So God is on trial before his own universe. The Bible tells us in Romans 14.12 So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. The Bible is teaching us the reality of the judgment. And this is a reality which no one can escape. Brothers and sisters, this judgment reaches our own personal affairs. Ecclesiastics 12, 14. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing whether good or evil brothers and sisters nothing and I mean absolutely nothing is a secret to God you can live a double life from your parents. But you cannot live a double life before God. You can lie to your wife. But you cannot lie to God. You can hide something from your husband. But you cannot hide from God. The Bible says that the judgment will reveal every secret. So how many secrets? Every secret. 
Brothers and sisters, nothing is a secret from God. Because he knows it all. No matter what you're reading or watching in private, God already knows. We appear before the judgment of God not as we pretend to be but as we actually are. We cannot pretend with God. You can, print, you can pretend with me, but you cannot pretend with God. You can pretend with your family, but you cannot pretend with God. We cannot hide from God. No matter how much you try, nothing is a secret to him. Once in a packed cinema, there was a movie playing. In the middle of the movie, it suddenly stopped. And the, the lights came on and the announcements came on. And a man with a loud voice said, If someone is here with another man's wife, you better leave quickly because her husband just ran in front of the door. And he is here with a loaded gun. Immediately, ten couples got up and ran. Brothers and sisters, that day, their secrets were exposed. The same way that their secrets were exposed will be the same way our secrets will be exposed. But the only difference is you will not be able to run. You will not be able to hide because he already knows it all. Matthew 12.36 says Matthew 12, on the day of judgment people will give account of every careless word they speak. Think about this. God will take our words into consideration. Every single word spoken. And he continues to say, for by our words you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. The Bible says that our words are brought into judgment. In the Bible, our words are very important. Haven't you heard the saying that says there's power in the tongue? The tongue is a powerful weapon. There is power. These sins were exposed. Excuse me. These sins will be exposed. On the day of judgment. Moses spoke angry words. He was angry. And rightfully so. So he struck the rock with angry words against stubborn people. And as a result, he was not allowed to enter the promised land with Israel. God forgave him, but his angry words cost him a lot. 
God forgives us. Modimo wa ri tswarela. But our words cost us a lot. Me ma o kwa rona a tsa go le go ntsi mo go rona. So be careful what you speak. Ka jalo ela thoko so se buang. Because they are being recorded. Ka gore sengwe le sengwe sa ga di se. And you will not be able to hide. Me bile ga ona o khona. Peter denied his Lord with curse words. Just when Jesus needed him the most. And what about the tragic words of treason spoken by Judas? Brothers and sisters, the judgment revealed that our thoughts our actions and our words will be judged. The Bible describes the book of judgment. When the prophets and the apostles were, wrote the Bible, there weren't any video cameras. There was no computers. Or no records. But there was a record book. Even today's doctors keep records. They keep detailed medical history of each and every one of their patients. But the heavenly records are even much more detailed. The Bible speaks of the book of remembrance. This book maintains a detailed record of our life and action. And even our thoughts and intentions. But the good news about this judgment is that everything is recorded. And I mean everything. Even our loving words. Even our acts of kindness. Our words of encouragement. The Lord has recorded everything you have done. Not just the bad. But the good as well. Those words of faith. They were uttered when you were praying with someone. Or when leading someone to Jesus. They are all recorded in the heavenly books. Every tear ever shed has been recorded in the book. You see, your father has seen every drop that has came from your face. He was there when you needed him the most. When you felt that he was the furthest away, he was actually the closest. My father will never leave you. Brothers and sisters, sorrow, loneliness, discouragement and depression are all recorded there. God knows the difficult circumstances you have gone through. God knows your struggles. God knows if you have struggled with poverty, sorrow, and tears. He knows who you truly are. Not who you claim to be. But who you really are. He has seen your battles, your struggles. 
and he has been there to experience your joy. And he has recorded it all. And there is a second book mentioned in the Bible. And the Bible calls it the Lamb's Book of Life. And in, on, in this book, I want my name. This is the book of those who will live forever. This is a book of those who have accepted eternal life. According to the Bible, at the end of time, there will be two groups of people. There will only be two. How many? Only two. The ones who will be saved. And the ones who are lost. Those that are saved have confessed their sins. And they have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They are not in rebellion against God. And the ones that are lost have not confessed their sins. And they have made their decision to follow Satan. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what group you want to be in, but I want to be amongst those who are saved. Can you say amen? Psalm 69:28 says, Pesala ma 69:28 yone yar. Let them be blotted out. Yara adi suti we of the book of the living. Mo lo kwalong laba batela. Let them not be enrolled amongst the righteous. Kana aba se kaba kwala mo go ba o baba tsia mo aba suti we. Brothers and sisters, this will be the fate of those who refuse to hear the invitation of Jesus. Of those who have rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. The Bible says they will be blotted out of the book of life. This will be the fate of those who have chosen. Their own desires above God's. They have accepted Satan's lies. Instead of the truth and power found in the Word of God. But Revelation 3 5 adds The ones who conquered. Will be clothed thus in white garments. And I will never blot his name out of the book of life. This is a wonderful promise for those of us who have accepted the forgiveness of Jesus. You only have two options. You only have two choices. You have to figure out for yourself where do you want to stand? Do you want to be blotted out of the book of life? Or do you want to be clothed in white garments? The decision is yours. One option is is that you appear before God alone. And I mean alone. And you face him without an advocate. You face him without someone fighting on your behalf. And you face him with your sinful desires. You face him with your pride. 
o mmona ka bo ikhogomoso ba gago your selfish ambitions e bo ikhogomoso ba gago go lebela wena hela o le nosi your terrible sins ma le wa gago a hatang but there's also a second option me gape go na le tsela ya bobedi is that you appear with jesus gore o a o bona le o na le krisit as your lawyer and advocate ile ne mwele di wa gago Brothers and sisters, Jesus steps forward. Ba ka o lengwe Kristo to ta gatela go pele. And he intercedes on your behalf. A ba go buelela. And when he stands in front of the Father, me ha e ma ha pele ga rara. My Father doesn't see your sins anymore. Rara ga bone mala wa ga go ya no. He sees his his son who has died for your salvation. O bona mo rae yo le ngo re o swetse poloko ya gago. And he goes before the father. Aba tsa ma ha pele ga ga rara. And he says father. Aba re rara. This is my child. Yo ke ngwana ke. Father. Rara. It is true that he has fallen into sin. Ke nete o etse mo boleong. But he has accepted me wa moretsi the my blood gore madi ame was shed for his sin a tsholetswe di bitsa gagwe therefore me ka jalo he is forgiven we tsharetswe which option would you choose we na tsela o bata ifi brothers and sisters i want jesus to intercede for me ba ka o lengwe na ke bata jesus wa mpuelela I want Jesus to intercede for you. Ke bata Jesu lo ena go buelela. I want him as my lawyer. Ke mata ele mwele di wa me. Because I know he has never lost before. Ka re ka i tsore ga isa la thegolo ke khang e. How can I know that I will pass the judgment? Ke ta itse jang jang gore ke ta henya ka tholo. The Bible says in Isaiah 64:6. Go ne mo go Isaiah 64:6. All my good deeds are not sufficient sufficient to pass the judgment. Brothers and sisters, we are like an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Nothing righteousness can come from me and you. It is only through the Father Ke hela ka rara that we will pass through judgment. Ha ile ngo re ta henya ka tholo. Romans 3:10 says. Ba Roma 3:10 yone ya re. As it is written. Ya ka go kwadilwe. None is righteous. Ha go ope yo tsiam. No not one. Nya le seng a le mongwe hela. Brothers and sisters. Ba ka o leng. We are all sinners. Rote re ba le uhi. And we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Me bi le re thaetse khalalelo ya modimo. But we also know. Me ga pera it. That the mighty God loves us. Gore modimo wa nono ho wa re rata. So much. O re rata tha. That he is willing to pardon your sins. Mo e leng gore wa iteta go itshwarela male wa gago. What an amazing love. Alo rato le le ha khamatsang. He is willing to give you. O ile ba batang go le go nela. And all you have to do is accept it. Tota wena la so tshwantseng o se dire ke go la amogela. You don't have to do anything in return. Ga go se pe so tshwantseng o se o re o se dire. But simply accept it. Go busetsa ha e se hela go amogela. After every sin that has been committed Ha maleo arsena go diriwe and every sin that has been confessed e bile re se ri poletse maleo wao the lord says my child you are forgiven mo dimo a re ngwana ke o itshwaretswe what great news that my father forgives our sins a di khantse di mo le mo gore ra ra o itshwarela di bitsa me he doesn't hold them over your head like us humans do ha ta le a di tshwere ao di mo ga thogo ya ka ya ka rona ba turi dir he forgives them all wa di itshwarela hela tsothe Brothers and sisters, we are not perfect. Ba ka o lengwe ka na re na le dilang. But we have been perfectly forgiven. Me ri tshwaretswe ka popota. Brothers and sisters, our sins do not appear unto God. Ba ka o lengwe di betsa rona ga di bona ga le hapele ga modimo. Because you can have the assurance ka ro ka na le nete hatso that your sins have been washed erased buried and forgiven ya gore di betsa ga go di thatsitswe di suthilwe e bile di katetswe 
We have broken the law of God. I have sinned. You have sinned. But God sent his son to live and die for you. At the, at the judgment, Jesus offers his justice in your favor. And if you had accepted him as your personal savior, your sins are forgiven. Your name is in the book of life. And you can now rejoice with the assurance of eternal life. John 5.24 says, Truly, truly, I say unto you, Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and shall not come into condemnation but has passed from death into life. What a blessed assurance. Raise your hand with me if you think this is good news. Your sins are forgiven. God wants to give you eternal life. What a great news. Brothers and sisters, when your name comes up before God, Jesus says, Father, you sent your spirit to their heart. Father, you love them. Rara ubaratile. And I died for them. Na ebeke basuela. And Satan says they deserve to die. Satan e na rinya basuane te basu. They deserve death. Basuane te kili su. Because they have sinned. Kaho re balohi. And the wages of sin. Me tuelo yale asibi. Is death. Kilu su. The consequences of our sins is death. But Jesus says, Father, I say to you, my precious blood frees them from their sins. So they do not deserve death. For I have died for them. Brothers and sisters, this is great news. You see, we may die on this world. But rejoice because you have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Death will not touch you. For his blood is enough for you. His blood wants to cover you. All the angels sing as your name is confirmed in the book of life. What an amazing image that will be. Hearing the angels sing each of our names. Brothers and sisters, Jesus has never lost our battle. Every time that Jesus goes against Satan, he loses. Why? So I don't know about you. But I want my Jesus as my lawyer fighting for me. I want him interceding on my behalf. Brothers and sisters, he has never lost a case. So you can have the assurance that he will not lose yours. When you choose Jesus as your personal Savior, you choose salvation and victory. You choose a new beginning and a new life. The Bible says, 
says in 1 John 2 1. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. Yes, we have an advocate Lord, with Jesus Christ. The one who represents us. The one who has never lost a case or a battle. The one who is fighting for me and you. The one who wants to give you eternal life. The one who has given you the gift of salvation. Brothers and sisters, when this life comes to an end, Money will not make a difference. You can have all the money in the world. But that will not help your case. You cannot pay a lot of money to win your case. Because he doesn't want any of that money. There's only one thing that will count. And that will be is your life in the hands of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. Because this decision will determine if you choose death or life. Revelation 22:12 says. And behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his word. Brothers and sisters, our decisions determine our eternal destiny. We all must choose if we want to be saved or if we want to be lost. Brothers and sisters, making the wrong decision is choosing eternal death. If you are willing to die, and I mean eternally, then make the wrong decision. But if you are willing to be saved, then you must make the right decision. You must ask forgiveness from Jesus. You must take that forgiveness that he offers. Brothers and sisters, Jesus wants eternal life for you. But you have to make that decision for yourself. No one can make that decision for you. Jesus is coming soon and very soon. And I mean very soon. So tonight is the night to make a decision. Tonight is the night where you must choose. You must choose if you want life or death. The decision is yours. My father gives you the free will to choose. So you must choose what it is that you want. Tonight Christ is talking to you. He is talking in your heart. He is inviting you to make a decision. And he is pleading for you to make the right one. He wants to give you eternal life. Because it will be a shame. If you have lived in this sinful world. And have struggled this much. Just to choose eternal death. Brother, it will be a shame. 
if we have put up with the struggles of this world if we have dealt with so much sorrow if we have dealt with the pain of death just to give up and experience eternal death brothers and sisters my father is interceding for you tonight he wants you to make the right decision because he loves you so much that he wants to see you in heaven. He wants to hold you tight and say, well done, my faithful child. The victory is yours. Brothers and sisters, the time will come when you will be judged. And you cannot hide. No matter how much you try, you cannot hide. You cannot hide from him. Because everything you have done has been recorded. But tonight, brothers and sisters, if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can have the assurance of salvation. You can have the assurance of eternal life. But you have to choose. You have to choose whether you want a new beginning. You have to choose whether you want to go boldly to the throne and confess your sin. You want you have to choose if you want acceptance and forgiveness for your sins. Brothers and sisters, tonight I am inviting each and every one of you to make a public confession of your decision to follow Jesus Christ. And you may ask, why should I? Why should I make it public? I have already made it private. Well, because, brothers and sisters, Jesus says in Matthew 10 32, if you confess your sins, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. Brothers and sisters, I am not worthy. And yet my Father says, all you have to do is be unashamed of me. Be unashamed of the one who gives you eternal life. And publicly confess your sin. He is asking you to be unashamed. He is asking you to come boldly. And he is asking you to confess your sins. Brothers and sisters, please let us stand as we sing our closing hymn. And we will sing the first hymn. Hy- Let's stand up and sing the closing hymn.
Brothers and sisters, Jesus has paid it all. But he has paid for all your sins. Tonight, I'm asking you to make a personal decision. Tonight, I'm asking you to choose. I'm asking you to choose. Do you want Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Do you want Him as your advocate and defender? Do you want Him as your lawyer in the day of in the day of judgment? Brothers and sisters, if it is your desire to have Jesus Christ interceding on your behalf then all I'm simply asking you to is to come forward to publicly announce that tonight you have made the decision to choose eternal life tonight I'm asking you to make the personal decision whether you are willing to choose eternal life or whether you are choosing eternal death Brothers and sisters, tonight I'm asking you to search into your heart and to ask yourself has this life been worth it? Has all of this sin been worth it? Am I willing to die? Or am I willing to have Jesus Christ as my advocate? And if you are willing to choose salvation tonight, then I ask that you come forward. Brothers and sisters, many of you have been making decisions for Jesus. And all of heaven has been rejoiced because you see these decisions have meant that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior you see my father rejoices when someone comes to the front and publicly confesses that he is a sinner Brothers and sisters, tonight is the night to come forward and to accept Jesus Christ. Tonight is the night to say, Lord, I need you fighting for me. Lord, I need you to cleanse me from all of my sins. I need you to cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Brothers and sisters, there is only one person who can do that. And he is reaching out to you tonight, calling you by name. And asking you to make a decision to come to the front for him. Brothers and sisters, the time will come when you will be judged and you cannot hide your sin. But he will be there ready to fight on your behalf. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is telling you that his blood is enough for your sin. Tonight he is asking you come to the front and make a decision for me. And if you have a, if you are already a church member, then come forward and reaffirm your decision to be faithful. Reaffirm your decision. And say, Lord, here I am standing again. Because you have been faithful before. And you will be faithful. Again. He is asking you to reaffirm your decision and to say, Father, I need you. And I need you to cleanse me. He's asking you to open up your hearts to him. Because he knows that you are looking and searching. He knows your heart. He knows each and every one of our hearts. He is asking you to 
asking you to make a decision for him. Christ is asking you tonight. Are you willing to stand alone and face me face my father alone? Or are you willing to have me intercede on your behalf? You see the choice is yours and he cannot choose for you. He will not choose for you. You have to choose what it is that you want. You have to choose whether you want salvation and eternal life. You have to choose whether you want to see your father. You have to choose whether your struggles have been worth it. Jesus Christ is actively searching for you. And he will not stop. He knows your heart. He knows that you are making decisions for him. He knows that you love him. But he is asking you to publicly confess him. If you want him to confess him for your father, then you must publicly confess him. You must make a decision. Do you want Jesus Christ? to go before his father and say, Father, my blood has covered him. Father, my blood is enough for him. And if it is your desire, then please join me as we pray. Father, you see the hearts of those who have made decisions. Father, they might not have come to the front, Lord, but I pray and I ask that you may give them the courage, Lord, that when the time comes, Lord, that they will publicly confess you, Lord, that they may choose to follow you, Lord. Lord, I pray and I ask, Lord, that you may grant us mercy, Lord, that you may continue to work for us, Lord, that you may continue to work with us, Lord. Lord, I pray and I ask that you may forgive all of our sins, Lord, that you may cleanse us, Lord, because you have promised, Lord, that your blood is enough for all of us, Lord. Lord, you have died for each and every one of us, Lord. You have said that you have loved us so much that you don't want us to see eternal death. Lord, we are grateful for the gift of salvation. Lord, that is the greatest act of love, Lord. You have shown us that you have loved us so much that you want to grant us salvation, Father. Father, thank you for the time that we have Lord, that we have came here to hear your word, Lord, that we have came to hear about how you will write our names in the book of life, and you will not blot us out, Lord, if we confess our sins and accept you as our personal Savior, Lord. I pray and I ask, Lord, that each and every one of these people who are hearing my word, my, my voice, Lord, may accept you as their personal saviors, Lord. I pray and I ask that they may come and reaffirm, Lord, their love with you, that they may reaffirm their decisions with you, and that they may come and, and ask for forgiveness again, Lord, and come and say, Lord, here I am, surrendering my all to you, the only one who can give me salvation, the only one in whom I have eternal life, Lord. Lord, thank you for the greatest act of love and for promising that if we follow and obey you, you will clothe us, Lord, in the garments of righteousness, Lord. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, were you blessed? Brothers and sisters, I pray that you may accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I pray that you may make decisions for Jesus Christ. Don't make decisions for men. Don't worry about what we think. Worry about what your Father in heaven thinks of you. Brothers and sisters, I pray to see you tomorrow. And I pray and I ask that you may invite someone. Invite someone 
Because the gift of eternal life is also for them. And invite them and tell them of the good news that my father is advocating for them. Invite them and tell them that Jesus loves you. There is no better place than to be in the house of the Lord. So I pray that I may see you tomorrow. I pray that the Lord may bless you and your family. I will continue to pray for you. And I ask that you pray for me as well. May the Lord bless you and have a good night. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for bringing us here safely, Father. We also want to thank you for being a God that is forgiving and a God that's loving. Father, we commit sins every day, some knowingly and some unknowingly. Yet, Father, you're always there ready to forgive us and welcome us with open arms. Father, I ask that you be with us, Lord, that we continue to be beacons of hope in the world, Father, that, Lord, we may be able to reflect you, Lord, in everything that we do, Lord. That our thoughts, our words, and our actions, Lord, reflect you, Lord, and show others out there, Lord, who you really are. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. I ask that you continue to be with us. That, Lord, as we depart, Lord, that you create in us new hearts and renew your steadfast spirit within us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Him Please join us again tomorrow at half five. Yeah. Good night and God bless.